beginning. Attempting new skills. Staying strong. Pushing yourself to new limits. Our client came to us with the ask of creating a new commercial for him, for his business. Um, he wanted to replace a very old uh, program and we were challenged with creating a spot around water. Uh, we've done a lot of water work before, but in order to make this particular spot dynamic, we wanted to be in the water. Well, the client, I think, was very open to what concepts that we could come up with, something that would really take it to kind of the next level. Oh, I like it wider, like wider? Yeah. This was a serious next level commercial for him. Um, you know, the day was split up into multiple segments. We had our, you know, in water, underwater, above water, you know, shoots throughout the whole day. We had various people, actors coming through the set throughout the day in order to accomplish all the unique scenes. Uh, David, our director, worked actually very closely, um, you know, in making sure that that schedule was very tight. Pre-production for a shoot like this is everything. Um, planning with the script, planning with the actors, planning with the pre-production of the uh, storyboards. Um, having all that there ahead of time, being able to talk with the uh, DOP. That's at the same time as this one. Being able to talk with the first assistant director, you're able to make sure that the day's gonna run smoothly. So when you get on set, you're not worrying about all that stuff. There's, there's never a dumb idea, you know? There's always something going forward. So for me, it was making sure that I got what I wanted to get across with this but I was always open to other ideas. And so we came up with the idea of something a little bit more like poetic. For this particular client, we were the agency and production company. So we come up with a creative to start, we pass it through client, and then once we have their blessing, it goes. But it never comes from just one person here. It's always a team effort. So our day started off quite early, um, it was a 5 a.m. call here at uh, 5 Gear. Uh, we loaded up and we're down to the location by 6 a.m. Going in the water with the camera was going to be new for us um, and lighting underwater was also going to be new for us. But we managed to um, you know, bring the appropriate lighting inside uh, with the camera and pull off shots that we have really never done before. With underwater lighting, um, it's a different world completely. For me, the challenge was, you know, safety. Uh, you know, bringing electrical items into water, you know, for anybody with their, you know, head screwed on properly, you know, tells you, you know, wait a second, water and electricity doesn't mix, you know. So on, on the day of, of the shoot, you know, we would put the lights in the water before turning anything on. Everyone would clear the pool. You know, we would spark it and then, you know, I was the brave one that stuck a toe in very quickly to find out if I'd feel a jolt or not. Uh, you know, so once safety was sort of over with, now it was understanding the properties of light. Uh, you know, there is an exponential drop off to light, um, but in water, everything changes. You know, water, uh, you know, sound travels, you know, at a, at a, at a speed I think of, of four to one and um, everything is magnified by 25%. So when you're lighting, those properties also change. Uh, you know, light will not travel as far. So we had to make sure that we actually had sufficient amount of lighting underwater. And of course, you know, never lighting before underwater, we didn't know how much we needed. So we really trusted upon, you know, a rental house, uh, you know, that we collaborated with in order to understand this. I'm a, a you know, a, a certified diver, um, and I've actually lit underwater with my own strobe in the ocean, in a pool where it's a different environment and you're dealing with different cameras than, say, a GoPro, which is what I've used to, you know, been diving with underwater. 
everything changed for us. So that was probably one of the biggest challenges that we faced, which was, you know, how are we going to light this talent? How much lighting is enough? Is it safe? Will it work? And can we get it set up on time? I wanted to bring, you know, Red Epic Pro to the table for this particular spot. Okay, so perfect. So the underwater shot, just so I can tell him properly, yeah. it's going to be, she's going to swim directly on top of Darren. Darren's going to stay in the deep end section. Yeah, she's going to swim over. Directly over. So for the lighting, do you want it to be tall? These cameras shoot at 8K, and so we really wanted to push the outer envelope here. You know, shooting with these cameras allows you a latitude and dynamic range that other cameras simply don't hold a candle to. Based on underwater uh, filming and the magnification factor and the lens that we were using, it was you know, recommended to us that 5K was the resolution that would be optimal for what we were doing. Then in order to match everything, we filmed 5K you know, on the surface. Um, in order to film at these resolutions, the amount of data that's being written is tremendous. So one of the challenges when you're filming on something like a Red Epic is it's not like a consumer camera where you can throw a 64 gig card in there and film for the day. You know, you're, you're constantly changing media. One of the biggest challenges on that day though was that every time the underwater camera needed, you know, either a battery which would exhaust itself quickly or a card, um, you know, we had to depressurize that unit and, and that was a process that would slow everything down. A thousand things could have gone wrong with the water and the camera. Technology and water, two things that are good bedfellows, you know. I guess the biggest hurdle again was making sure uh, that we were all in sync and we were all set on what we wanted and also a little bit of freedom to get some interesting shots as well that maybe we didn't plan and when we were there we were like oh this would be amazing to get right while well, we're here can we do we have enough time to get this my favorite shot under the water that was planned was when we had this little tiny boy who was all of a year or two old and he is you know dunked under the water and then you know he is he has been trained through his courses to have his eyes open and swim. And so you see him, you know, coming at you with this big smile on his face. And you know, without that shot, I don't think this the spot would have been nearly as endearing. I think that's a, a critical moment in the commercial. You know, the one that sort of I liked the most was one that actually came upon almost by accident. Uh, we had a little boy who, uh, you know, his moment was to uh, expressed fear by coming to you know the edge of the pool and sort of looking down with trep you know with, with trepidation and um, when he jumped in uh, the response of the water in the lighting was spectacular and um, I was very excited down there I couldn't wait to pop up and you know talk to the DP to say I want to try something different here than what was planned. Originally the plan was just to look up from the water and see this kid, you know, coming to the edge. Instead, you know, we were able to get this moment where he came and, you know, jumped into the water. As we turned the camera, the light started highlighting, you know, the water more and more. And it becomes this sort of surreal, you know, uh, the abyss, you know, James Cameron type feel as he's you know, in the water, and the camera is moving in slow mo, and the bubbles are all coming in slow mo. So, it was it was quite a, a, a spectacular um, you know, accident. David Plunge. I mean, what more can I say? This is a guy who, the moment you look at him, you just want to start smiling. You know, he's he's the, he's the type of person that when he's directing, you want to give more for him. He's not the director that everybody you know can't stand by the end of the day. At the end of the day, you're like, I want to work with you again. This was such a positive experience. When can I come back to actually work with you? What I learned most is trust in the crew that you get. Trust in the people that are around you. And I worked with a great team of people better than me who could push this to the next level.